Today I'll be talking about the computer. In our previous lesson, we have this, uh, we have introduced HCI, and we have more or less have an introduction of the human, on how human processes uh, what it sees or its input from visual, audio, etc. Now let's talk about the computer. So the computer, a computer system is made up of various elements. And each of these elements affect the interaction. So some of these elements are the input devices where we use it for our text entry and pointing. Then we have our output devices. So the screen, it can be small or large, or we can also use digital paper, etc. And we also have the virtual reality. So it's a special interaction and display devices. We also have physical interaction, like we have the sound, haptic, biosensing, paper as output, print, or as, as an input, we can scan paper. Memory, we have the random access memory and permanent media. And this also is affected by its capacity and how we access data from this memory. Processing, so processing, we should consider the speed of processing and also how do we process data from or information from networks. Now this is how a typical computer system looks like. But you notice here that uh, the typical here is we have a question mark because this is no longer maybe the typical computer system. Uh, maybe for some we have other devices that are connected to your computer. But basically this is the what we call maybe the basic uh, elements of a computer system so we have the keyboard and then we have the mouse or the trackpad and we have the screen or monitor of which there are windows especially if you're using a graphical user interface and variations is that we can have some sort of a desktop computer just like what is here on this uh, diagram here a laptop computer or a pda or maybe a cell phone or a pda is uh, what we call sometimes palm taps the devices dictate the styles of interaction that the system supports. If you use different devices, then the interface will support a different style of interaction. So uh, we have a different interaction if you use desktop. Then maybe also different with the laptop, especially with its pointing devices, because sometimes laptop makes use of touch point rather than mouse. And for cell phones or uh, palm top computers, then we could use maybe touch screen. So we in interact with uh, these devices differently. Now here is an example of the input devices. So the keyboard is the most common text input device because it allows rapid entry of text by experienced users. So if you're an experienced typist, then you can type uh, rapidly into you can enter text rapidly so the key press so if you press a key actually it closes the connection and causing a character code to be sent to the computer and usually a key keyboard is connected by a cable but we also have several wireless computers maybe through infrared or through Bluetooth and the layout of the keyboard is usually the QWERTY so it's standardized layout, but non-alphanumeric keys are placed differently. So especially for computers, we have the alphanumeric keys placed differently. Accent accented symbols needed for different scripts and minor differences between UK and USA keyboards. The QWERTY arrangement is not optimal for typing because the QWERTY was designed to prevent typewriters from jamming. So that's the uh, design of the QWERTY. It's not really to uh, make typing uh, fast, but it's the main purpose of the QWERTY layout is to prevent typewriters from jamming. So alternative designs allow faster typing, but large social base of QWERTY typists produces reluctance to change. So since there are already a large social base of QWERTY type, so there are a lot of those who are using the QWERTY keyboard, then the alternative designs 
could not be easily accepted by these typists. That's why until the day, I believe that most keyboard, the layout for most keyboard is QWERTY keyboard. So this is the QWERTY keyboard. That's why it's called QWERTY because uh, on this part we have QWERTY. And most probably your, the layout of your keyboard is similar to this one. Now alternative keyboard layout. Now there are also keyboards that are alphabetic. So keys are arranged in alphabetical order but not faster for trained typists and not faster for beginners either. So again we also have keyboard that are alphabetic. We also have the Dvorak keyboard. The common letters under dominant fingers. So the common letters that are used will be under the dominant finger, maybe the pointing fingers. And bias towards the right hand. So more on the right hand, the most common letters are on the right hand. Common combinations of letters alternate between hands. And then 10 to, percent, 10 to 15 percent improvement in speed and reduction in fatigue. But again, large social base of QWERTY typists produce market pressures not to change. So this is actually supposed to be a better layout of the keyboard rather than the QWERTY. But since uh, the QWERTY has been used for quite some time now because uh, everything started with a typewriter, then there's a reluctance to change to the Devorak uh, layout. Here's another type of a keyboard, so only, only a few keys, four or five, and letters type as combination of key presses. So compact size, ideal for portable applications. So since uh, it's very small, then it's portable. Short learning time, because the key presses reflect letter shape, but I haven't tried something like this. And it's fast once you have trained. But again, there's social resistance and plus fatigue after extended use, maybe because you're only, only using a single hand. And it's new, so the niche market uh, for some wearable. So this is actually a wearable keyboard. Special keyboards. So designed to reduce fatigue for RSI, repetitive strain injury and maybe for one-handed use. So example is the Maltron left-handed keyboard. So this is an example of a keyboard. So we use only the left hand for this keyboard, especially maybe this part. Then we also have numeric keypads. And maybe if you haven't noticed yet, there are two different styles for entering numbers quickly, calculator, PC keyboard. It's quite different with that of the telephones. So, not the same. So, for telephone, the numbers 1, 2, 3 are on the top, while for calculator and keyboards, numbers 1, 2, 3 are at the bottom. Then the mouse. So, the mouse is a handheld pointing device, and it's very common because it's easy to use. There are two characteristics. So, the planar, planar, move, planar movement. So the movement is uh, interpreted and also the buttons. So usually from one to three buttons. On top, used for making a selection, indicating an option or to initiate drawing, etc. So more or less you're familiar with the mouse. Now, if you're quite interested, this is how the first mouse looks like. Then we also have the touchpad. Touchpad is small touch sensitive tablet, stroke to move mouse pointer and used mainly in laptop computers. So it's a, it has good acceleration settings if you have the correct settings and then fast stroke. So a lot of pixels per inch move, initial movement to the target. Slow stroke, less pixels. So if you use fast stroke, lots of pixel per inch so if you have slow stroke less pixels per inch this is used for accurate positioning 
Then we also have truck bowls and thumb wheels. So truck bowl, the bowl is rotated inside its static housing like an upside down mouse. So it's like a mouse but it's upside down because the ball is actually on top. Especially the older mouse, uh, we have the mechanical mouse, we have actually a, a, some sort of a ball at the bottom of the mouse. But here, it's an up, uh, it looks like an upside down mouse, so that ball is actually on top. So very fast for gaming, used in some portable and notebook output. We also have thumb wheels for accurate CAD or two dials for XY cursor position for fast scrolling single dial or mouse then joystick we also have the joystick so indirect pressure of stick is the velocity of movement so buttons for selection so we have on top or on front trigger so these are the buttons for selection they are often used for computer games and aircraft controls in like aircraft controls in 3d navigation so this is an example of a joystick now let's talk about memory so the short-term memory of a computer we actually make use of the random access memory so the random access memory is of course placed on silicon chips and 100 nanosecond access time maybe even faster now usually volatile so that means you lose information if power is turned off and data transferred at around 100 megabytes per second. Some non-volatile ROM used to store basic setup information. So typical desktop computers have 64 to 256 megabytes of RAM. I think this is already false. So we have gigabytes of RAM already. How about long-term memory? So for long-term memory, we actually make use of the disk. So like magnetic disk, so floppy disk store around 1.4 megabytes. Hard disk typically 40 gigabytes to 100 gigabytes, so it's no longer true. We have now terabytes of hard disk. Access, access time is uh, approximately 10 milliseconds. Transfer rate is 100 kilobytes per second. Optical disks, so these are the CDs, etc. So use lasers to read and sometimes write and more robust than magnetic data. And CD-ROM, same technology as home audio. So approximately 600 gigabytes DVD for AB applications or very large files. Now we usually, we now use this uh, rarely already. Speed and capacity. What do these numbers mean? So, some sizes. So, this book, <coughs> I know we're not using a book. <coughs> so, maybe a typical book have 320,000 words. So, that's around 2 megabytes. The Bible is around 4.5 megabytes. Scan page is around 120 megabytes. It's, but that's 11 by 8 at 100 1200 that's per inch an 8-bit gray scale but of course if it is colored it can it will be a lot bigger <coughs> digital photo that's around 10 megabytes that is if you're using 2 to 4 megapixels and 24-bit color but of course now it's uh, even bigger <coughs> video 10 megabytes per second that's using 5 12 by 5, 12, 12 bit color and 25 frames per second. And again, this is no longer true. So these are already old values. <coughs> the cathode ray tube. So a stream of electrons emitted from electron gun focused and directed by magnetic fields. So heat, phosphor, Will coated screen which glows so this will hit the screen and then the screen will glow so using TVs and computer monitors then we have the liquid crystal displays and of course lately we have not only LCDs but LEDs so smaller lighter and no radiation problems found on PDAs portables and notebooks 
and increasingly on desktop and even for home TV. Actually, now it's already the standard. Also used in dedicated displays like digital watches, mobile phones, hi-fi controls. So how it works, top plate transparent and polarized bottom plate reflecting. So light passes through the top plate and crystal and reflects back to the eye. The voltage applied to crystal changes polarization and hence color. So light reflected not emitted so there is lesser eye strain as compared with the cathode ray tube. Known printing. Image made from small dots so allows any character set or graphics to be printed. So the printing is something like this. It is composed of several dots. So critical features for printers we have the res resolution so the size and spacing of dots measured in dots per inch so the higher the dots per inch then that means the better is the resolution and the better is the uh, appearance of the text the speed is usually measured in page per minute and of course sometimes this is affected by the cost Sometimes the faster the computer, the better the resolution is, the higher the cost. So, actually this is just a, some sort of a review of the devices that are used for, uh, by, used by the computers. So, for input and output. So, there are other devices and maybe we'll be uh, discussing other devices as we go on with this uh, subject. So, for now we'll be uh, ending here and for the next video or lecture video we'll be dis <coughs> discussing about the basic interaction of human to computers so thank you very much for listening